Hello, hello, this is Christy Jones, Holistic Health and Mindfulness Educator. And today I wanted to take a few minutes and talk about mindfulness and what I have learned from working with children um, around the conversation of mindfulness. And so when you think of mindfulness, what comes into your mind? A lot of times people will say, um, being aware of my behavior and how it affects other people. And so what I want to introduce you today is my understanding of mindfulness of working with third graders. And for you to know a little bit about me, one of the things that I get to do is I'm the healthy living educator in a local school district. And I've been able to work with 2,500 students a school year for the past nine years. And I will tell you that kids are amazing teachers and so I've been able to really um, be able to understand their perspectives and hear even being able to see how things have shifted in society in the last nine years so a couple of years ago um, schools do something called a healthy kids survey and they ask kids questions they can be pretty deep questions on do you feel connected do you have have you thought about thoughts of harm? Have you um, feel like you've been bullied? Have you been using substances, you know, alcohol or smoking, things like that? It's, it's for upper grade kids. And the results that have been coming back from school districts is that kids have felt more and more disconnected. And when I heard that a couple years ago, we know that we have felt that as a society. And our kids are not immune to that. And it became a very deep calling for me that in the work that I do with kids and with adults, but especially kids in the schools, is to be able to give them tools to connect them to themselves. So if we're feeling disconnected from others, we're also feeling disconnected to ourselves. And that is where I feel the power of mindfulness can be really useful. So what I teach is mindfulness, simple mindfulness ways that we can become connected to ourselves inside. And if you refer to some of my videos, I teach mindfulness exercises to be able to slow down, to be able to connect. And, and so that has been a key focus. So today, what I want to really talk about is understanding mindfulness. And so when we're looking at mindfulness, the definition that I love using is that mindfulness is being in the present moment. So how do we know we're in the present moment? <laughs> and so when I ask third graders this, because I do a lot of work with third graders around mindfulness, they're like, I think it means right now. I'm like, okay, cool. So being in the present moment means now. And so how do we know we're fully in the present moment? And the definition that I love is that we know that we're fully in the present moment when our mind and our body are in the same location. Have you ever noticed that sometimes our body is in a location, <laughs> our body's here, but our mind is either in the past or the future? And so it's so fun working with kids and explaining this concept and I will ask them, have you ever been sitting in the classroom and your body is here, where's your mind? It's not here. And they laugh. So I'll ask them, my next question to them, are you ever at home with your parents and your parents are talking to you and your body's there? Where's your mind? And once again, they'll laugh and they'll say, it's not there. So they're starting to get this concept of being present. So I'll say now, have you ever been talking to an adult or a parent and you know their body is there? Where's their mind? It's not there. <laughs> So kids are brilliant. They know when we're present with them and they know when we're not. And we'll talk about usually our parents and the adults in our lives are so busy trying to get food on the table, get you to practices and rehearsals and events that they're in the future. They're trying to make sure all the pieces fit together and that you get what you need. And so then I'll ask them, and to me this is so powerful, have you ever had someone be really present with you? 
You know that they're looking in your eyes. You know that they're listening to what you're saying. And they'll raise their hands. How does that feel when you have somebody that's really present with you? So these are eight-year-olds I'm talking to, right? I feel loved. I feel cared about. I feel that I'm important. So powerful. When we're able to connect in a conversation and be fully present, our mind and our body in the same location, talking to each other. So then I'll ask these kids, have you been present with somebody else, a friend or an adult in your life? How do you feel when you are present with another person, when you're the one listening to them? And I will tell you, fewer kids have had this experience. The ones that share, they'll say, when I am present with somebody, I feel like I get to understand them. I feel like if I'm present with them, they're going to be present with me. It's powerful. So then my next question to them is, how do you think that person feels when you are present with them? They feel loved. They feel important. They feel understood. As I said, kids have amazing wisdom when we listen to them. So I'll ask them, do you think now that we understand this concept, of bringing our mind and our body into the same location in conversations. Do you think that we can make a difference? Us knowing this, can you share this with your families? Can we find time every day that we are fully present with each other? And they're like, yeah. I said, don't you think we could totally make a difference on this planet with mindful conversations. So cool. So then I will ask them, what gets in our way of being present with each other? And I will hold up a cell phone, right? My cell phone's recording right now, so I can't hold it up. I'll say, does this get in the way? And the response I get from kids is really heartbreaking. They'll say, I can't get my parents off their phone. They're like, I have to yell and I'll have to say, mom, 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 or dad, dad, dad. Or they'll realize they're talking, but they're not being heard. And I share this because I think there's so much wisdom in understanding that technology is here. It's got a place in our lives. And I think it came in so quickly that we've all been caught off guard on how much it's had an impact, how much um, we can work from sunup till <laughs> all night long because we're always in contact because of this little device. And I think it's really important that we have that device and at the same time that we pause and we look at how has it impacted our relationships. And how can we, especially now in this time that we're in, create mindful conversations with each other. Whether it's with our kids, whether it's with our friends, or other people in our lives, coworkers. But to be able to take this concept of mindfulness, of our mind and our body in the same location, fully present with each other. And I know we have some restrictions on um, being with each other in each other's space physically, we can still do this on FaceTime. We can still do this on a telephone call. But my invitation for you today is to reflect on the wisdom that these kids have shared. To understand one of the most powerful gifts that we can give ourselves and each other is to be present, fully present, mind and body in the same location. So what I'd like to invite you to do today is spend time with the people that are in your household. Laugh, joke, create good times, put your phone away, <laughs> pull
play game and fully embrace this time. I truly believe that this time is a pause that we can learn to reconnect together and really be present. So let me know your thoughts on this. This is one way that I feel that we can practice mindfulness is mindful conversations. Let me know your thoughts, leave comments. I'd love to know feedback that you have as well. Like I said, technology's here. We need it, it's a useful tool too. And I think being aware of how we can impact each other, that connection, and this goes back to what I was talking about at the beginning, connection is so key. We need each other. So create some fun times today. Let me know your thoughts. Sending you love and joy and laughter. Have a great day.